Hello Internet, today we're going to be going back to our Observer project and today we're going to be making it so that we can use things other than transforms. So right now we have the ability to give it a, a name to search for, so we'll search for like all the lights in the scene. And then we can give it the property or field that we want to grab from that, uh, from that object or from that set of objects to display. The problem is that's only coming from the transform. So every object has a transform and we're just pulling the transform, say position in this case, and using that to fill out all of our data. If we want to use something else, like say the camera and say collect all the, the view frustrums of all the cameras or do something else, like have a custom component that we've added ourselves and find that, this doesn't let us do that. That's what we're going to add today. I don't really know how this is going to work. So that's what we're going to be trying to do now. Uh, so the general idea is we're going to add a third text box. Those text boxes, by the way, aren't going to stay there. That's not the final design. It's pretty, it's pretty gross, but it, it keeps them all separate. And then we can kind of develop all the features separately and hopefully not get into premature um, abstraction like we did the last video. So that's sort of what I'm trying to avoid there. So really what we need to do is take this component out and find a component. So find component of game object. And we want, let's capitalize this. Let's not do Java things. There we go. And so we'll give it the game object. And I want to give it some type by name. Uh, so type name. Sure, it should work. And so type name can be put way up at the top here. Uh, let's call it the observed type. Observed component. I think that's good. That's a good name. And so, ooh, okay. Observed component. We can go down here now and replace type name with that. And we need to do a copy and paste there. So now we have a third text field here, which means we can actually edit it. So it'll go the name you're searching for, then the component, and then finally the member you're, you're looking for. And so hopefully that kind of gives us a way to do all of that stuff. And then I really just need to find components of the game object. And so we have our game object. So our components is going to be equal to game object dot get components of type component. So we kind of already demonstrated this, that you can just use component, which is the base class for every component in any Unity component. So by doing this, we're going to get everything. So this will get us our transform and it will get us any other things that we've added, like lights, for example. And so now we should just be able to iterate over these. We're going to return a component like that because git member by name expects, hold on, a component. So it needs to be given a component. So we need to find a return a component. If we don't return a component, everything else is not going to work. You could just make that not a component, but that would defeat the purpose. So <laughs> now that we're not getting distracted anymore, this is going to do something fun. Don't really know what that is yet, but I think we should be able to do some fun link stuff here. And this might just work. <laughs> so I think, so the way first works in link, if you're not familiar, First is going to give it, you give it a predicate and it will return, it will look over a list until it finds something that matches that predicate. A predicate is just a function that returns a Boolean value. And so if it, that predicate returns true, it's going to return whatever that is and just stop execution, which means if the first thing matches, it hits the first thing and stops, which is great because it means you aren't iterating over your entire list in the best case. And we don't, we don't need to in this case. Once we find something, we're, we're good. I, you could theoretically have multiple of the same component, you, like colliders, for example. If you're searching for colliders, it's possible to have like a sphere and a box collider on that component. 
we're not going to support that case yet because that's sort of a special case and less often used less often used uh, so yeah the case where you have multiple of the same components or are searching for a component that is a child of something that's inheriting I think for now just finding by name will at least get us started and we can kind of start seeing how we're using this and then figure things out from there it may be that this is not as useful as I'm thinking and so just adding all of that extra complexity is not as not as useful but hopefully that's not the case <laughs> so we'll take our component and say if the component dot name that's going to get it so part of the issue here <laughs> if I do name that isn't the components name to my knowledge that's going to be the name of the game object you're attached to because every component has a reference to the game object which is fun I guess but it's not what we want so we want to get the type and get the name don't know how to do that though so we're gonna guess <laughs> that should work so name should return the name of the component and then we're going to do a string comparison dot uh, how do you do dot equals string comparisons are interesting because there's more than just this equals here uh, you, you could just do an equals and say uh, observed component problem is then you'd have to actually capitalize it if we want to say make it so you can not capitalize it if you don't want to like if you're looking for a transform you need a capital T transform if you want to do all lowercase for whatever reason and we don't want it to be uh, case sensitive there's an invariant string comparison dot uh, current culture ignore case invariant culture ignore case so you can do something like this which is going to automatically compare things as if they the case doesn't matter so if you have a capital a that's going to be equal to a lowercase a uh, and this prevents you from having to actually cast that string and either capitalize the entire thing or lowercase the entire thing this handles that internally so you don't need to do anything else and theoretically that's it that should be all we need to do unless I've missed something because I may have totally overlooked something but theoretically <laughs> big big theory here but theoretically we should be able to find a if I type say transform we'll get our directional lights now that's fantastic uh, we are getting a ton of errors though Get reference isn't set to a type of an object. We need to do a null check on this. Uh, so we are checking if our member is null, but now the component can be null as well. So the component may not be attached to all the objects. And if it isn't, then we're not going to draw that object. Actually, uh, if component is not null, we'll do all of this stuff. This, this function is getting really ridiculously out of hand, but we can continue and then we'll, we'll start pulling things out. Uh, my plan with this is to make this code kind of gross, get it working the, sort of the way I want, write a bunch of tests that don't really follow this at all, but kind of mirror that functionality, and then try to pull the, these parts out into tests. So hopefully we'll get some of the Unity testing framework involved here so we can actually start testing this. And so if we don't get anything, we are going to type or return uh, how do I want to do this? So what I'm thinking is I want a message that is just going to say editor GUI layout dot label field. The component blah um, what, what do we want to type here I don't really want to do concatenation like this though
Yeah, we're going to. So I could switch up to the uh, Unity 4.6 C Sharp version. The problem with doing that is it, then you couldn't use this package in a version of Unity that didn't support that, which isn't really ideal. It would mean you wouldn't be able to use the legacy C Sharp additions in Unity if I used uh, the string interpolation stuff. So we're not going to do that. Instead, we're just going to add the strings. We could do this, I guess. Isn't this how this? No. Hold on. It's been a long time since I've done the old style of C sharp string interpolation stuff. But I'm pretty sure it works like this. Or not. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Or maybe I do, and you just have to do it this way. <laughs> so we have our component there. The component, uh, what is it? Observed component there can't be found. Uh, so if it can't be found, we're going to stick some quotes in here. Can't be found. Please on this game object. Sure, I think that's clear enough, right? It kind of tells you at least we tried and it didn't work. Uh, so otherwise, this will pre hopefully prevent you from getting that, just an empty box. Now we get the component blank, <laughs> can't be found in this game object. I don't like this though, where we have nothing there and it's just failing. So we're actually going to do this and stick some ands in this block. And string is null or empty. Observed component. String is null or empty observed member. So what this is going to do is mean that you need to stick a, you need all three components. Uh, so the observed name component and member to all be present in order for this to even work. If you don't provide one of those, like it's just empty, you're going to get this error message, the name of an object to observe. That's not right. Oh, enter the name of an object to observe. I can't read. <laughs> so, Instead, we're going to say, please provide the name of an object, the components to observe, and the field slash property property to watch. I think that's a little bit clearer, hopefully. Kind of just clearing things up because I think we're getting pretty close. The other, the final thing that I wanna do now that we have all of this stuff working is take this and go, let's see, transform. Everything's good. But now I want something other than this. Uh, so we are, have only worked with transforms right now. That's really the only thing that has worked. So let's create an entirely new component we're going to call it a uh, test component. And so now that we can use names, we should be able to find this one as well. And so I should be able to say test component dot do something and it should just work. And I should be able to open this in Visual Studio, but Unity is very stubborn apparently. So once we get this open, I'm gonna stick two, I think, uh, vector threes in there one a property and one a field. And then the idea is we should be able to modify both of those and see both of those. And then the final step to do after this, well, there's a whole bunch of steps. Uh, one, we need to clear up these three text boxes. I think we're gonna start by doing a regular expression to kind of join all three of these and then pull each of them out. So we'll need a really quick syntax to kind of put all of them in one and then parse it with a regular expression and figure out which component or which part of this 
maps to each part of that expression. And then we need to support other things other than vector threes. I don't really know the best way to do that. Uh, so ideally what I'd like to do is pull the custom editor. Like say you have a custom component or a custom field or something. You can write a custom editor for that. I want to be able to find that and use it here. I don't really know how to do that yet. We may have to reflect to find it. Um, that work. It, it just doesn't seem ideal. This is taking a very long time. I think I crashed Unity. Huh. Reload. Is that what happened? Did oh okay. Apparently, when there's a dialogue in Visual Studio, it just freezes Unity and there's no prompt. Great. Well, <laughs> we'll stop with that tangent and just start doing the stuff. So let's do public. Uh, there's actually a cool way we can do this. We can do a vector three. That's just going to be a field. And so this will be test one. Great. And let's initialize that to vector three dot zero. And then we also want a property. So we'll do uh, vector three, which will be uh, test two. And so that's going to have a getter which is just going to return test one and a setter that is going to say test one equals value. So the reason I'm doing this is theoretically we should be able to inspect this component, look up test one, set it to some value, switch over to test two and see that value is still there and then set it in test two and switch back to test one and it should be there as well, which means that these are actually reflecting correctly. One thing we haven't tried yet is a property that has no setter or no getter. If that's the case, this may not work very well, but I'm not really, I haven't really thought that far, so I don't know the best solution. Anyway, let's throw this on our lights. I'm just gonna put it on all of them because I think that makes the most sense. There's some edge cases here of not under or not having it on all of the things that you found we can actually test that and i'm not going to fix it if it goes wrong but we can at least look into what's going on so we want to go into test component we don't need to capitalize it it found the component because those messages disappeared and so i should be able to go to test one there we go it's all zeros and so i should be able to increase this to like some large number and then do test two and it's still 30, which means that that's all working. And then I can decrease this back to like negative 30 something and do test one. And we still have negative 30 something. That's great. Let's take this component off of our directional light one. And now we get one message that says the test component can't be found in this game object. And then two that actually found it, which sort of works it's not the best way to handle this obviously but it's better than nothing so i think we can we can leave that for now there's obviously going to be a lot of things that aren't fully fleshed out yet we've only spent like two hours on this t project total so i'm i'm pretty happy with the how far we've gotten uh, i think this is as far as i want to go here though uh, we can do all the regular expression stuff later though so yeah you guys have suggestions on how we could improve this or other things that you would like to see this be able to do let me know in the comments uh yeah i think that's it so till next time see you, internet